The Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshi Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshinsky with a Neptune missile. Ukrainian Navy spokesperson Dmitro Plitinchuk said this. Currently, this ship is not combat capable, Plitinchuk said on national television. He added that a Ukrainian-made Neptune anti-ship missile was used for this, Ukraine, which still controls several hundred kilometers of Black Sea coastline despite Russian occupation of some of its southern regions, does not have any large warships however, it has conducted a series of successful strikes on Russia's Black Sea fleet in recent months using missiles or seaborne drones, there was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Plitinchuk said, currently, this ship is not combat capable. There was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Four nine years it was dismantled for parts, and a year ago they decided to restore IT. In addition, the Speaker of the Naval Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces confirmed the defeat of the ship Ivan Kurs in Crimea. As for the Ivan Kurs, we can confirm the defeat of reconnaissance equipment in the assault part of the ship. That is, in fact, now he is not ready for combat. He cannot carry out the tasks as intended, said Dmitry Pletenchuk. NATO is encouraging its member nations to stock supplies for World War III. Saber rattling between NATO and Russia has intensified in the past month including French President Emmanuel Macron repeating the possibility of sending ground troops to Ukraine. According to Newsweek, Pierre Schill, the commander of France's ground forces, said that it could command a 60,000-strong force in Ukraine and that troops would be ready if called upon, with threats from Russia that any intervention in Ukraine could lead to wider global conflict. Some have suggested that NATO is encouraging its member nations to stock supplies for World War III. A March the 20th post on X by commentator Ian Miles Chung that has been viewed 57,000 times said, NATO is now telling people to stock up on supplies in the event that World War III begins tomorrow. Next level fearmongering. You know none of them are actually taking this seriously because the media's only talking about Kate Middleton and European politicians and celebrities aren't even bothering to hunker down and do anything that would even remotely imply that they're thinking about any potential for a conflict with Russia. If they were really so pressed, they'd have started the draft and mobilized production on munitions instead of worrying about carbon taxes and climate change. The post included a video of Admiral Rob Bauer, chair of the NATO military committee in which he said, you need to have water, you need to have a radio on batteries and you need to have a flashlight on batteries to make sure that you can survive the first 36 hours. Things like that. It's simple things. While some of what Bauer said could be interpreted in the manner described by Chung, the context of the conversation should be considered. Bauer's comments were taken from a joint press conference from January the 18th, where he did speak about preparedness, albeit with a little more depth than the truncated clip and social media post provides. Bauer was asked for his reaction to Swedish citizens panic buying radios that don't need electricity, tents and signing up for self-defense forces. The Swedish government had recently warned citizens that war could come to the country, France 20